Should you invest in ConAgra brands? Let's analyze it on growth shares. There are plenty of metrics out there, but only a few make sense when you're investing for the long term. In this analysis, we're going to look at earnings growth, the P.E. ratio, dividend yield, return on equity, free cash flow, and the stock's intrinsic value. Each are weighted based on importance. Each metric will be given a grade from 0 to 99, with 99 being the top end of the scale. After that, we put everything together to get our final grade. I encourage you to pause this video at any time. Growth is the backbone of my analysis, and you want a company that continually grows. Earnings growth is a combination of three growth factors, growth over the next year, growth over the next 10 years, which is then discounted based on the current inflation rate. A growth rate of 3% is average, as it equals the long-term inflation rate. A rate of 8% or higher is what I consider a good growth rate. Here's our company's growth rate with its corresponding grade. We'll keep that number in mind because we'll need it when determining the company's intrinsic value later on. Next, I want to look at P-E ratio. It's a popular valuation metric that tells us at what multiple the stock is trading at compared to its earnings. A P-E ratio at 25 is average and anything at 15 or lower is what I consider a good P-E ratio. Here's our company's P-E ratio with its corresponding grade. The more of a premium the stock is trading relative to its earnings, we can assume it's more overvalued. It's not a bad thing, but it's an important part of my evaluation. Then we look at dividends. Dividends are an underappreciated metric when analyzing a company. Taken in a vacuum, the higher the dividend, the better. A yield of 1.5% is average, which is in line with that of an index fund. A yield of 2.1% or higher is what I consider a good dividend yield. Here's our company's dividend yield and its corresponding grade. If you own a stock that doesn't pay a dividend, you're not making any money from it. The only way you can make money is if you sell the stock. And if you're a long-term investor, you don't plan on ever selling. So that means you need a dividend to pay while you hold. Next, we look at return on equity. ROE is profit generated with the money shareholders have invested, basically how much you're getting back for every dollar put in. A 6.75% ROE is average and anything at 11.75% or higher is what I considered a good return on equity. Here's our company's ROE and its corresponding grade. A company's return on equity measures its effectiveness in handling the money you invest when buying its stock. You want something good in return. Then we look at free cash flow. Free cash flow is what is left after a business pays its day-to-day -day operating expenses. We always want positive free cash flow for our company, which means more money coming in than what's going out. A free cash flow of $12.75 billion on its balance sheet is considered average. A free cash flow of $17.75 billion or more is what I consider good. Here's our company's free cash flow and its corresponding grade. I look at free cash flow as a measure of our company's market dominance. Cash is king when it comes to research and development and acquisitions. It's a big part of what gives a company its economic moat. The way I calculate intrinsic value is by using a discounted cash flow model. I get the current discount rate, which I use the current 10-year U.S. Treasury yield. After that, I figure its growth stage over the next 10 years, which is the growth rate we calculated earlier. And for the terminal stage, which follows once the growth stage of the company is completed, I set it at 0%. I also take into account how stable the company is, which is a subjective measurement. I want predictability in our company's earnings. And when we put all those data points together, we get our intrinsic value for the company. An intrinsic value relative to its current stock price of 0% means the company is fairly valued. An intrinsic value of 17% or better is what I consider an undervalued company. Here's our company's intrinsic value and its corresponding grade. Before we get our company's final grade, consider becoming a growth shares Patreon member. You'll get access to every grade from every company I've analyzed. It's updated all the time. Head to patreon.com forward slash growth shares or click on the link in the description. We got all our metrics graded and now we can get our company's final grade. A grade of 50 is average and a final grade of 70 or better is a good long-term investment. Here's our company's final grade. 
This analysis is simple, yet an effective way to get your research started in the right direction. There are a lot of numbers out there and a lot of noise. Keep your investing simple and you'll do fine over the long term. So what kind of investor are you? Let me know. Take my free survey. I left the link in the description below. Once I get enough data, I'll make a video about what I find. Link below. Don't forget to subscribe if you like this analysis and you want more in the future. Invest wisely and as always, take care of your money.